Cool. <laughs> All right. Cool, guys. So we're here. Uh, we took a long break. Welcome back to Even Odds. Welcome back to Even Odds. To yeah. To our battle playthrough. To our, yeah, our, our playthrough of a Kill Team game. So we took a break in the last yeah. video. We decided this would be better as uh, two separate videos than than one. Uh, so it's such a long break, we changed clothes. Look at that, amazing. <laughs> How did this happen? Oh my God. Video magic. So uh, today we're playing the Disrupt Supply Lines mission, okay? Uh, deployment map is this. We've tried to emulate it as best as possible here, okay? So we've got our objectives here here and here, all right? And now Carly and the ad mech will be trying to defend these from the myself defender. and the gene stealer cults led by Ural Kraus. Ural <laughs> Kraus. And my leader, Dorox. Four, three, is it four, three, it's, four, or three, four, no, three? No, nay, it is zero point four, three, four, three. Let it, let it be known. Let it be known, but I'm so just gonna. So shall it be lovingly nickname him Dorox. Dorox it is. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to show you a little bit of deployment uh, and then get into the game. So uh, in this mission, right, uh, Carly is the defender. She's picked this side here of the map. I'm the attacker, so this is my side here. These green dice mark out our deployment zones, all right? Uh, so I'll be deploying back here. So I'm going to start off uh, with Rouse Cypher, my uh, my flamer guy. Wait, were we going to redo initiative rolls? Or uh, just that's, going... that's after deployment is initiative oh, okay. rolls, yeah. So uh, I'll just put him, uh, I'll just place him right here to start off, right on the front of my deployment line. So now we take turns going back and forth uh, between our deployments. So uh, now Carly will pick one of her members of the uh, Adeptus Mechanicus. Okay, so not to whatever, but we were actually talking a little bit before we started and going along with the whole this is about learning how to play. I'm not really sure and I'm not going to overthink it too much. I'm still getting to know my guys as will you at this stage. We're condensing this as like a beginning playthrough so I'm not necessarily making the best strategic moves here. So in general I guess you're supposed to kind of put them Maybe behind something obstructed sure, so yeah. that you're not going to immediately get clobbered, um, but that, you know, then you can also see potentially your enemy enough that you're going to be able to shoot them or go into combat. So maybe I shouldn't start with my leader. I'm going to start with a ranger because my rangers have, like, good shooting range. And they have rapid fire guns. There you go. So if I'm within range, I can shoot multiple times. I don't know. I want to be within. I'm defending the objective, so I want to be within three inches. Yep. Um. Okay. Here he'll be able to kind of see through there. I okay. Guess. Great. Perfect. So then it'll go back to me. All right. And uh, I'm gonna just do. Um, I'm gonna just do sort of like a like a regular auto gun guy, sort of this the allegory to your ranger here. Okay. Uh, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna put him, um, you know, I'm gonna put him right right in here, right in here. So he's also sort of obscured, but in a good firing lane. Okay. All right. And then now back to you. Okay. Um. I. I guess I'll just kind of continue with, I'll put out my rangers. So this is my ranger gunner, Tov. Um, oh, that other guy was Griffon. Griffon Reductus. Okay. And now Can we talk briefly Tov. about that? Like, you do need to know who, which guy is which. Which guy is which, yeah, um, So absolutely. this guy has a special um, extra range gun. So he can maybe be back a little bit. I, I do remember measuring before. I'm, I'm pretty sure if I stick his base right there, I'll still be within the three inches. Yeah, yep, that's looks like, like it's the me. end. So, and you said that that's in the core rules, right? So yeah, three inches. Three inches is how rules. you hold okay, an objective. Gonna, 
And I'm sort of here. I'm obscured just a tiny little okay. bit. Okay, great. And then, uh, so now I'll go ahead and I'll put uh, Zandis Rezik. Uh, he's got a cool, uh, he's got a cool shotgun there. Look at him. He's awesome. He'll be great when he's painted up. He's gonna accompany uh, Rouse Cipher, uh, my my flamethrower guy. All right, uh, so guys, I hope that uh, that's a deployment. Basically, we're gonna keep going uh, back and forth here till everyone's deployed. Uh, but it would be uh, maybe not so thrilling to show you all yeah. of that. But basically, that's it, guys. Yeah, but uh, basically, don't. I mean, I guess it's like you know, don't get overwhelmed. Right. Yeah. Don't. That's <laughs> don't that's like the theme. Don't overthink it while right? you're learning. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So you know, you'll get to know. I guess as you play more what strategies you want to take into yeah, consideration absolutely. your different weapon ranges, but yeah. Yep. All right, so uh, we'll be back. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, so here we are. We're done with uh, deployment. So we've got a little pocket of Gene Steeler cults here, here, and a couple of them up here. And then for Admech, we've got some guys down here. Nice little, nice little faded encounter over here is going to happen. Uh, we've got uh, this is uh, Tov up here, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah, Tov, Tov is Tov uh, taking the, the sniper position. The ranger gunner. All right, we've got uh, we've got some guys down here with our admech leader Dorox, and a couple spread out here holding this objective. All right, so that's deployment. Um, we're all set here to go. So what's going to happen next is we're going to go. Should we take out? The yeah, yeah, we can take those out. There's so uh, what's going to happen now is it's going to be the uh, beginning of battle round one. Okay, and now at the beginning of battle round one, a couple different things happen. First off, we each get a special rule that our army has um, that takes place. Uh, mine is called cult ambush, and what it is is for each model. So I've got, you know, four here, four here, and two here, all right? For each model, I'll roll a d6, all right? And on a five or six, then they'll get to immediately move up to five inches, all right? And uh, Carly, okay. what's the add And you only get rule? that once per game, Once per right? game, right? Right and at the top of round one, and that's it. Okay. That's my special rule. and that's rule. written just in this book under yep so your own, like, yeah so okay, if we so flip yeah, all your, the way to the okay. back here over to the gene stealers so all of the gene i'm playing a bunch of neophyte hybrids and right here cult ambush after deployment but before the first battle round roll a d6 for this model on a five plus this model can immediately move up to six inches okay. and that's on each and every one of my models so i'll roll a d6 for each one and then okay. now also, Carly, you at the top of each round, so mine is a once per game, but yours is a, a once every round. Okay. You'll yeah. get, uh, well, what do you get? Tell me about it. Um, I have Canticles of the Omnissiah. So um, I have um, these, I can choose one of the six at mm -hmm. the beginning of each round, or I can roll a die. Um, the difference being that if I choose them, I can't choose the same one twice, whereas a die roll gives me the potentiality of getting the same one twice if I want to have that pota that the potential the roll. <laughs> <laughs> Just inventing boop words boop. now. Okay, boop, boop. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, cool. Uh, right. So then, so. Carly, what uh, what canticle are you choosing, um, or are you, you gonna know, roll? I I didn't actually. You know, I mean, so I said I was going to do Shroud Psalm, but I don't know. I mean, I mean, Shroud Psalm is a good way to start, right? Strong. Because it's, it's a great about way to start. obstruction. Yeah. So, especially at this point, while I'm mostly obstructed, have most of my guys, that gives me a benefit right off the bat, which means that when you, my enemy player, makes hitting roll, hit rolls in shooting, um, against any of mine that are obscured, then you get a minus one to any of your hit rolls. So it is, it's a, it's a good one to start with too, because right now I'm not in combat with you, right? Because right. that one's right. not going to yeah. benefit you as much when you're in Absolutely. combat. So, um, yeah. So okay, so Shroud, Shroud Psalm, Psalm it is. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and roll and move my guys as applicable and we'll we'll be right back for the initiative phase all right so this is the, what it looks like after cult ambush so i rolled pretty hot so i've got these three guys 
they were here, now they're here, pretty close to the objective. Uh, up here, only one of them made it forward, so he just kind of came up a bit, all right? And then over in this pocket, you see they were all over here. Now we've had three move up, so we're, we're getting pretty danger close right off the top. All right, so... Pretty strong for the whole go. point of this mission, which we didn't really talk about. So yeah, so, like a little, yeah. Yeah. So, so well, go ahead yeah, and tell them, tell them what the point of the mission zone. is. That's fine. Well, okay, so I'm defending these three objectives. You're trying to get them. So this particular mission, unlike the other one we did, is only scored at the end of the game, right? The other one yep. we played was scored at the end of every round. So again, that's the kind of variability you'll have as you're playing various games. So in this one, I have to be within three inches of the objectives at the end of the game mm -hmm. to control them. Absolutely. And same with you. Same with me, yeah. But one thing is that you have the um, ability to destroy the objectives, which gives you an automatic one point mm -hmm. and um, completely eliminates the It objective. takes the objective yeah. off the board. So at the end of the game, each one is worth three points unless you have already destroyed it and then you get that automatic one. Right. Right. So I so guess we'll I'm see. supposed this is... to have the advantage of being the defender. Right. But at right. the same time then you have the advantage of being able to destroy them. So Yes, yeah. So I mean we'll see. We'll see because it all comes down to uh, you know how the die goes as well, right? It is a dice game. Mm. So we'll see we'll see how the how the random luck goes. But uh, yeah the cult cult got a good strong start here. Uh, with the with the good cult ambush roll, so we'll go right into the initiative phase. Okay. All right, and now like we talked about in the rules overview, we're each going to roll two d six, and then whoever has the highest will get initiative, and we'll go straight into the movement phase from there. Oh my god! <laughs> there you go. Look at that. Uh, so both of us. <laughs> so in the event of a tie like this, uh, you re-roll. Okay. I swear if we both get like two sixes. Okay, so oh Carly God, so got a uh, six and a two, so an eight, <laughs> and I got a five and a two, so a seven, which wow. means that Carly what? has initiative for, this, for round. this round. Okay. All right, so uh, with that, uh, Carly, uh, go ahead and start your movement phase. We're just going to show you a little bit of the movement phase, uh, again, just so you get an idea of what it looks like. And then we'll come back at the end once it's all okay. done. So let's go or... over this since this is an instructional yeah, uh, absolutely. introductory thing. Okay, so just to reiterate, um, so my choices are to do a standard six inch move. Standard six inch move. I can yeah. advance, which yes. um, gives me, me the ability to go further, Correct. but yeah. um, loses any shooting ability from a non assault weapon. Mm -hmm. I can charge into you potentially yep. and then that I puts us in dive, combat which i would have to measure how far away i am from you and then roll 2d6 2d6 and then i have to get within one inch of you yep and so the closer i am initially to you the better chance i have of successfully charging yep or number four is i can ready a model which gives me the advantage in, in the, the shooting, shooting phase now i have initiative anyway mm -hmm. so but if you readied models, then mm -hmm. you would still then shoot me ahead Correct. of that. So if I want to make sure that I shoot you first, I can. That would be readying. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna like charge this guy back. Okay. So you'll uh, you're gonna advance him then. Yeah, or that's what I meant. Okay. So you'll roll one one d six. So six plus five. So six plus five. Eleven. Yeah. So an eleven inch inches. move. Yep. Absolutely. All right. And then you'll just want to drop off an advanced token. Okay, That's the, the two one. arrows right, this right one, there. This yep. An advanced. Yep. That's the advanced token right okay. there. All right. Seven, just eight, drop eight, it right there. Number. Yep. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. And then maybe I'll just move these two guys like the six inches. Okay. Back here, just so I'm not like sitting duck, sitting ducks here. Go 
Okay. Great. And then so then you'll just drop the move off move token next to them, okay, which, which is the single one? arrow. Yeah. Okay. And then that'll be you know good enough. We'll know it's both of them. Okay. All right. That one's readying. There. Boom. There we go. So uh, so there you go. There's uh, advancing, normal moving, and readying. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, and just do up the rest of the movement phase here and uh, and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, okay. so we're done with the movement phase. So what we've got going here, uh, so this guy moved, you can see the move uh, token there. All right, we've got this guy advanced. Up here, one ready, one move. Over here, this whole pocket of gene stealers advanced. All right, as we saw, we advanced here, readied here. Ooh, let's... We're gonna work on our camera, 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 camera manship. Wow, that was really hard to say. Camera manship. All right, we've got these two guys moved. Uh, Dorox here, the leader, he moved. All right, these two readied, and then this whole pocket readied here. All right, so uh, we're in the shooting phase. So we're done with movement. So you have, I mean, so much for this uh, smaller board here for Kill Team because, you know, you just kind of moved right in on Yeah, I, I'm, I'm so, in. I'm in. I mean, we, barely, we haven't even done anything, any shooting or fighting or anything, and we're already both we're already in the, in the thick, thick of it. it. I mean, so this whole other side of the board is basically, basically useless at this useless point. That's for true. This that's true. Uh, well, you know, uh, that the such is one, such yeah. is the nature of the beast. Yeah. You know. Yeah, the other one we played the objectives were on both sides. We're all the over, board, yeah. So. All right, so now that we're we're done with the movement phase, and we'll go into the shooting phase. Now, okay. uh, like we discussed in our rules video, the shooting phase is split between readied models and non-readied models. Now, so we both have readied models. I only particularly have one readied model, whereas you have uh, multiple. Uh, so what we're going to do now then is um, we're going to uh, take turns, starting with Carly here, since she has initiative, activating our, our models. And we'll just do, we'll do a couple for you uh, just so you get the gist of how shooting works, and then we'll come back at the end of the shooting phase for you, all right? So, Carly, uh, which of your readied models would you like to activate? Um, I guess I'll shoot him first, then, with this guy. All right, so uh, this is uh, Tav, right? Yeah. So Tav, Tav is going to fire over him. at uh, Jude Undergast. So this is a great, uh, this is a great uh, moment here, right? So we've got, uh, we've got <laughs> One Tav. One of the history books, Yeah, so, really. something, something like that, right? <laughs> so Tav here is going to fire. All right, and we can see we'll check our line of sight. Okay, okay so there's right, Tav. There's we're Tav. looking, and we're looking back here at Jude Undergast. All right, so from the point of view of Tav, from the best possible point of view, is Jude uh, obstructed at all, considering yeah, his body? Which I would say no. His gun yeah, looks a little bit. Yeah, but did you mean for him to be? Uh, no, I just moved him. I just, I just moved him. You know, I didn't, I didn't uh, talk about whether or not I was trying to hide okay. him from Tom. Well, so, so this is a, an, yeah, this is like a Warhammer thing. The eels then have to kind of make that. Yeah, make that judgment, judgment call. I'm gonna say he's not obscure. Okay, so, cool. So, so uh, Tov nice. won't be taking a penalty for obscurement. Now, what's the range on Tov's gun? Tov has an arc rifle, uh, which has a 24 inch, and it's a rapid fire weapon. So, if your guy is within 12 inches, 12 inches I get right. an extra shot. Right. I don't think he is. So let's see. 12 inches is a long oh. way. He oh is. yeah, he's Wait, uh, yeah. he's easily within twelve oh, inches. Wow. So okay. it looks like Tov is not going to be uh, is not going to be taking any penalties to fire because <laughs> we are not at long range. We're not obscured. Okay. So now that's a rapid fire one gun. It is within half range. So that means okay. it gets two shots. That means two shots. All right, and okay. then okay. Um, so I have two dice then to signify. The two shots that this gentleman will take against the other. He has a 
do I use his? A ballistic skill. Oh, ballistic skill is three plus. All right. So I have to hit a three up, and that's not changed because he has right. no obscurement. Okay, so I'm going to do this. All right, Ooh. so both have hit. Both hit. All right, now what's the strength of your gun? The strength of my gun is six. All right, so the toughness of Jude Undergast, and here's a spoiler, it's all of the... Uh, it's all of the Gene Steeler cults. My toughness is three. All right, so now uh, we talk about wounding. Wounding can sometimes be a bit confusing, but if we flip to the back, we've got a quick reference guide. Here's how wounding works. Uh, we went over it in the video, but we'll touch it on here again. That's our wounding table. So now uh, six is the strength of the attack twice or more than the toughness of the model. Six is twice what three is, so yes, so we're wounding on a two plus. Okay, so if this if if this was melee, since Tav is a, just a gunner and he doesn't have a melee weapon, that would be his own strength, which right. is three, right? Correct. Okay, but since he but does luckily it's shooting have a gun, it, does have a it gun. then overrides what his own personal strength is. Correct. And then if he had a melee weapon, that strength would maybe also be different. Correct. Okay. All right, so um, we'll um, roll. Yep. Oops. All right, so well, one hit the table and one didn't. Well, so. that one was a two. Well, no, um. it fell off the table. You got to re-roll. You all see? <laughs> there you go. All right, so we rolled a six and a one. Okay. So one. So one fails. And one does not. Yep. Yeah. Or how? It, whatever. Gla right. Glass. Glass so, half yeah, full. Yeah. Glass so, half empty. So sort of it's a six. Right there. So it's a six okay. and a one. Okay, mm -hmm. so the six is two or higher, so that wounds. Okay. The one, obviously, is less than two, okay. so that fails. So we've got one wound. Okay. All right. So now you have to save. So now I have to save. save. I have a five plus save, so I need to roll a five or a six to save. Which is shown save. right there on the card, okay. which mine says four plus. Right, this so Jude, Jude Undergast's save is five plus. All right, so we'll roll. All right, we've rolled a four. All right, and then now the AP, the armor piercing, is this Tav? Boy. Yeah, minus one. Is minus one. So modifiers affect the die roll, so that four actually becomes a three, which means that I fail my save. All right, so I failed my save, and then now what's the damage on Tav's gun? The damage on Tav's gun is one. Damage is one. My wounds are one. So Jude Undergast has been brought to zero wounds. Oh, my Lord. What? <laughs> so now Carly, you'll make an injury roll. All okay. right. So now this is an extra step in kill team versus 40k. All right. Oh, so man. you've rolled a one. Actually, that's perfect in terms of uh, showing everything. So Jude Undergast rolls a one. Now a one is just a flesh wound. So Jude gets a flesh wound. All right. So, now that's your model fired, so we'll take our we'll take our ready token and we'll just flip it over to shot to show that he's been fired. Okay. All right? Now, since I still have a readied model, thankfully, uh, I will get to fire him as well. So, checking his line of sight here, uh, it looks like everyone from Jude's point of view is going to be obstructed in some form or fashion, even old... So this is a great, so Tav here had a clear line of sight from Jude, but Jude does not have a clear line of sight to Tav, so he is obstructed, all right? So since I'm obstructed regardless, okay, uh, it doesn't really matter who I fire with. I have a 36-inch range gun, so I know that uh, basically everybody is going to be within half range, uh, for the most part, uh, except maybe like, you know, like this guy back here. So uh, Jude is going to fire at uh, at this one over here. I don't know who that is. Uh, um, that's uh, that something. Is, um, that is, um, uh, that's um, Zizos. Zizos. So we're firing. So Jude is going to fire at Zizos. All right. So he's got a heavy stubber which has three shots, all right? So we've got three die. Now my ballistic skill 
is a four plus, all right? So I hit on fours, except for that everyone is obstructed, okay? So I actually will roll and we'll find out, okay? So, oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> okay, well, he is motivated. All right, so I hit on fours. So now he all of these have hit. shall not be denied yeah. his moment of glory. He's going he's gonna to take it, right? So now <laughs> modifiers affect the die roll. So obstruction is a minus one. Shroud Psalm, which is in effect right now, makes it an additional minus one. Oh, gosh. Uh, makes it an additional minus one. All right. And then now I have a flesh wound on Jude as well, which makes it an additional minus one. So currently he's taking a minus three. All sixes. Yes, that's what's hilarious about this. So that's a minus three to hit, which would mean... I'd need to roll a seven to be able to hit. But the core rules in Kill Team means sixes always hit, which means I got extremely lucky here. Wait, so where does it say that? That is in, that's in the core rules uh, in, actually we'll just flip over right now. Uh, it's going to be under the shooting phase when it discusses all the modifiers. Okay, so here we go. An unmodified, right here at the bottom, an unmodified hit roll of one always fails, and an unmodified hit roll of six always hits. Right here. Oh, okay. There okay. It is. So I've rolled three sixes. Unmodified means what the die is actually showing. So I've got three hits, which is very unlikely, maybe the best roll of my life. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, I don't think that's true, but... the strength of my heavy stubber is strength four. The toughness of Zizos is... The toughness of Zizos himself is a three. Is three. So... T for toughness. Yep. So four is greater than three, but not double. So I wound on threes. So I've got two wounds and one fail. All right. So now it skips over to Carly to make her saves. There's no AP on this. All right. And Zizos okay. has a and save Zizos of what? Zizos has a four up save. A four up save. At the end there, the S of E, four plus. All right. Okay. So All right, so one pass one, two. fail one. Okay. All right, so my damage is one, so I'll roll one injury die. Oh my god. Oh wow. You just killed him. Yeah. Oh, I just dropped the other. That's all right. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll bleep it out. It's right. fine. Uh, so wait, that's. Wait, wait. Wow, you just killed him! Amazing. So, uh, Zizos, <laughs> because I rolled a four up on that, uh, Zizos is out of action. Wow. Well, so he is gone. Just that's completely the one. Oh my gosh. gone wow. from the match. Wow. All right? So, uh, right off the bat. We'll, we'll just go ahead and do the rest. We'll flip over his tokens showing he shot. Uh, and we'll do the rest. We'll come back. We'll show you, uh, we'll show you the, uh, the end of the shooting phase. <laughs> All right, so that is the end of the shooting phase here. Just a quick recap for you. Uh, as we saw, uh, Tav here uh, put a flesh wound on Jude Ondergast, who then proceeded to uh, shoot one guy right off the map. Real nice <laughs> stuff. Uh, things of note that happened, um, Yorl Kraus is gone. He's been vaporized. <laughs> Just absolutely obliterated. Six damage was caused to him by some lucky rolls, definitely making up for a sex, uh, you know, blasphemy to the machine god, which is why he got melted. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, the Tau, or sorry, the uh, Adeptus <laughs> Mechanicus here holds strong on the objectives, uh, but the uh, but Gene Stealer cults are, you know, uh, threatening here. Um, so that's the end of the shooting phase. There's no fight phase this round because no one got into combat. So what we're going to do now is the morale phase. Okay. Now in morale, you start with the player who has initiative, so the admec. Mm -hmm. uh, and first we're going to check if your kill team is broken. Okay. All right. So you've got, you have to uh, either everyone on your kill team is out of action has a flesh wound or is shaken, then you'll automatically be broken, of which is not the case. 
So you'll have to take a test if more than half of your models are out of action, have a flesh wound, or are shaken, of which you have three. So you have two out of action and one flesh wound, okay? So that's not more than half of 10. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to take any, any test there. So you have no shaken tokens to remove, so we don't have to do that step. Now you do have to take a nerve test for uh, R99 here, mm -hmm. okay? So to take a nerve test, we take a single die and we roll it. Okay, we got a two. Uh -oh. Now we compare that to your leadership characteristic, which is LD here. Let's Six. see if we can get it. Okay, now you have to exceed your leadership on the roll mm -hmm. to, uh, to fail. So you've rolled a two. Now there are some modifiers to take into account. So R99, if I'm not mistaken, is, uh, is this guy back here? Yeah. All right, so R99 gets a plus one to the roll for every out of action or shaken model. So we've got two out of action. So two plus two is four. And then a minus one for every friendly model within two inches, of which there are none. So we end up with four. Now four still does not exceed six. So R99 is A-OK. -okay. All right, so we'll go over to me. So I've got one, two, three, four that are out of action or flesh wounded. So no, uh, no morale, no break check for me. I'm not broken and nor can I break, but I do need to take two nerve tests here. All right, so first off, we'll take a nerve test for Basque Thrace. We got a two. So two plus two is four. And Basque is actually right up here next to his buddy, so minus one. So that's three to my leadership seven. So we're fine there. Now we'll take a test for Jude Undergast. A three, four, five. And Jude is right here next to his buddy. And that's minus one. So four to my leadership of seven. So we're fine there. So no one is shaken. All right, so with that, we'll go right into round two with the initiative phase. Okay. All right, so we'll each roll 2d6. So I've got a 5, you've got a 7. All right, so the yeah, admin have got once an, more. Absolutely. So we'll come back at the end of the movement phase to show you what we've got. Okay, so we're all done with the movement phase. So we've got these two guys readied up here. Uh, Decima moved forward. Meanwhile, uh, ooh, name here. Decima That's Griffon. Decima moved up while Griffon readied. Dorox valiantly charged in to Basque Thrace. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, our other gene stealer called Guy charged in to support. Uh, we've got some movement, some readying here, some movement here. We've got two gene stealers charging in here and then uh, advance. And then a cheeky little advance roll to bring him inside here. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's the end of the movement phase. We're gonna go into the shooting phase. Uh, we'll come back to you in just a minute. All right, so that is the end of the shooting phase. So, uh, Simon Helm wiped off the face of the earth. <laughs> Jude Undergast, gone. And Admeg, looking pretty healthy. I don't think I didn't do a single uh, flush when I don't think I connected with a single shot. I think I missed all my shots, but that's okay because oh. we're going into the fight phase. All right, so this is our first fight phase here, round two. Okay. Ding ding ding. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, starting with models who charged. So both of my models here charged. I have one model here that charged, but Dorox has charged. All right, so dun, dun, dun. Dorox is my leader. Is your leader. And he's and got some muscle. Yeah, now Carly has initiative, so she gets to activate her charging model first. Okay. All right, and we didn't talk about this before, but the can Carly rolled off for the canticle uh, and got, uh, which yeah, one is that I got one? Number, no, it's you got number five. number five. Oh, yeah, this is oh, it right oh, here. Right here. Oh. Yep, uh, Invocation of Machine Might. Add one to the strength characteristic of models in your kill team 
So Dorox, previously strength three, now strength four, which is going to be big here. Yeah. All right. Because he has a power sword. <clears throat> yes. So how many attacks does Dorox have? Um, is that the up here? Then? A for attacks, okay. yeah. So, but that I was looking at the actual weapon, but no, okay. So Dorox gets two attacks. All right, so two attacks. All right, and what is Dorox's weapon skill, WS? Um, four plus. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so you'll get two attacks hitting on fours. Okay. And uh, would you like to go into Basque Thrace? Actually, yes. Basque Thrace is the only one you can go into. But oh, okay. oh, no, that's not true. Ignore me. You can go into the other guy, too, but... Basque Thrace is wounded, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's go All right, so hand. two attacks hitting so two on attacks. fours. Two attacks. Wait, why am I hitting on fours? Because your oh, weapon skill. Weapon skill. Four up. But yep. wait, do I get... Oh, that's only... But this for... is to hit. Okay. Yep. All right, so you've got one hit, one yeah. fail. Okay. Now your strength is... My strength is user plus one... So four. So strength four strength to my four toughness, to three. toughness three. So, so threes to wound. Threes to wound. No. Oh man, oh, that's nine. huge. That is huge. Okay. So we'll go uh, and actually we'll just go ahead and fight with uh, <clears throat> with David Kaiser here. All right, he gets one attack. All right, that's my that's my model who charged in to help. Uh, against Basque. He gets one attack, okay. hitting on a four. Hits. Oh, man. Strength three to toughness three, so fours to wounds. Okay, but I have four. That's your strength four. is four, not your toughness. Ugh. So I've rolled a five, so I get the wound. So Dorox needs to make a save. No AP. And my save is four plus. Oh! My, my, my. I'm loving the ones. Here we go. Injury roll. Just a flesh Just wound. A flesh Just wound. a flesh wound on old Dorox. That's terrible. All right. Then now I have two chargers over here to fight uh, Actus. So we'll activate. Wait, did uh, you charge with both of them? No, Basque didn't charge. Why? Because oh, you I charged, charged him. him but yeah. You can't. But charge back at this me. is the order of operations is that chargers fight first. Oh, okay. So what will happen is, right, so you activated your charger. It's just like uh, readied models okay. in the shooting phase. Chargers fight first, and then non-chargers fight after that. So Dorox activated. Then I activated uh, him. Now I have two to activate because they charged. Then we'll drop to non-charging okay. models, in which case you'll be able to activate Actus. And then I'll be able to activate Basque. All right. So uh, we'll do uh, Rouse Cipher here, my flamer guy. He hits because he's got a weapon skill of four up. All right. He fails to wound because strength three to toughness three needs a four. So he fails. We'll do our other guy here. He fails to even hit. All right. So now we drop to non-charging models. So you'll activate Actus. Wait, um, Actus is right here. Mm -hmm. Why can't I do Tog for, I mean, uh, Dorox? You've already done Dorox. Yeah, but he's going back into the other guy now. He already, he already got his attacks for the phase. <laughs> Okay. Um, Everyone only gets to fight once. Oh, okay. Yeah. So actually, <laughs> that was so sad though. I know. Well, this, this has actually so been sad. kind of a sad uh, combat phase oh, overall. All right. Actus has an assault. Th no, because this is combat. Yep. So it's he just has got one, one attack. attack. Yeah. Oh God. All right. And I Any rolled fails. a one, which means. Okay. And then now I'll activate Basque Thrace. He's got one attack. He oh hits on a four, right. but he has a flesh wound, so a minus one to hit. So hitting on a five. No. Okay. Wow. What a hot whiffer of a <laughs> fight phase this has been. 
absolutely nothing has happened except for that Dorox here has taken a flesh wound. Uh, All right, so we'll go into the... Not quite the outcome one might have imagined. No, I thought this was going to be a bloodier turn, honestly. Uh, so we'll go into the morale phase. Okay. All right, so once again, we'll check if your team is broken. You've got one, four, two, three, four out of six. Ten. So you are not broken, nor do you even need to test. No one was shaken from last turn, but you do need to take two nerve checks here. Okay. One for R99, one for Dorox. All right. Okay. And how, what is that again? So that's going to be rolling a single die. And who is this for? Well, we'll say that's for Dorox. <laughs> no, no, that's good. That's good oh, because... That's, that's because oh, okay. in the morale phase, oh, an unmodified right. one always passes. So Dorox okay. passes. Oh, okay. okay. So when you do the nerve test, it's when you like do the nerve test, you want you want, you low, want rolls. low rolls. Yeah. Because you add things to yes. it. Yes. Okay, Correct. And you want it to be under All right. Leadership. And then. No, I want that to be for. You want that to be well, for your leader, probably. Yeah, but he has a leadership seven in this. Okay, if you wanted that to be one. for R ninety nine, go right ahead. <laughs> and then you'll roll a six for Dorox. <laughs> He's been doing me any good. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see what your other nerve test is. Uh, so, are you going to say no, that was for R99 or for Dorox? That's, yeah, that's not fair for me to pick and choose. <clears throat> um, oh, God. I'm going to say it was for R99. Okay, so R99 passes. What about okay. for Dorox? Look, oh, same, my same. gosh. So Unbreakable. Both... <laughs> All right, I love so. I'm rolling the ones, baby. <laughs> All right, so we'll come over here. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh -oh. That is more than half of my kill team is out of action or flesh wounded. So I need to take a break check. So how a break check works is I roll 2d6 and I compare it to the highest leadership on the table. The highest leadership I currently have is seven. So as long as I don't roll higher than a seven, I'll be okay. I roll a seven, so I'm fine. <laughs> so my team does not break, but then now I need to make nerve checks for my models here. So for Foil Carleone, that's my that's my guy tucked away in here. For him, a two, two, four, five, six, seven. And then does he have anyone nearby him that's within two inches? Uh, those guys look like they're within two inches. Well, it doesn't matter even if they're not because seven meets his leadership, does not exceed it. So four of Carleone is fine. Okay. So now for Basque Thrace, a two, three, four, five, six. He's good. So no one breaks. Okay, shaken. No one's shaken. All right. So we'll go into round three. So uh, what would your canticle be for round three? I'll just roll. Okay. A one. <laughs> wow. Shocker. Wow. All right, oh so a my one. God. All right, incantation of the iron soul. I can re-roll failed nerve tests. Okay, there you go. That's pretty good. So, at this uh, and then let's just do our initiative uh, here. Uh -huh. I've rolled a four and a six. Now that it doesn't even really so matter you've rolled too a much, ten now I've rolled a four to my six. eight. So once again, Admech have the initiative. We'll come back to you at the end of the movement phase. All right. Okay. So at the end of movement phase, uh, Tav up here readied, uh, Griffon and Decima readied, R ninety nine advanced, booked it from way over here, all the way over here with a nice six inch advance roll. Uh, We've got, um, oh man, I'm so bad with names. It's okay. Capic. Uh, we've got Capic uh, uh, staying locked in, and this, this is and, uh, the um, comms guy. No, that's Capic. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that is, yeah, so Capic charged in. Capic, and then yeah, the other one is, is uh, Actus. Actus. So Capic and Actus are still locked in here with Rouse and and uh, Xander Rezik. And then uh, Dave and Kaiser charged in, or I'm sorry, that's Foil Carleone. Ford Carleone charged in here, and we just have a big old scrum in the middle. Meanwhile, uh, Yorick Kavorla advanced, leaving his leaving his safe perch up here to come down here and uh, hide, basically. All right, 
So uh, we'll see, we're gonna do the shooting phase. Should be a quick one, we'll come back in just a minute. So uh, shooting phase, what a clunker. Uh, <laughs> basically, thanks to uh, Yorick Kavorla uh, booking it down here, the only ones that could shoot were Yorick and, oh no, we don't, uh, your leader can fire his pistol. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Okay, we'll just so, keep it Yeah, rolling. yeah, we'll just. All right, uh, so, okay, yeah, so one we got, shot. I got one shot here. Oh. Hits. And Oops. who is this going into, Oops. really quick, of the of the three guys, who is this going into? Uh, Basque. Basque, Basque has let's a wound, Basque. and Foil Carleone yep. has let's a wound. Do, let's do Basque. Basque, he's a natural born survivor. <gasps> oh, and he survives again. Uh, okay. All right, okay. And so then R, yeah, and then R99 also fired in here, uh, failed. Uh, he fired at foil. Uh, it's just all. It's been all bad. It's yeah. just all misses. Yeah. So we're gonna go into. Yeah, we're gonna go into a big combat phase. We've got these guys to fight and this big scrum here in the middle, and uh, we're gonna find out uh, who can do it. All right, we'll be back. We'll try them. All right, so uh, fight phase, kind of an interesting one. Basically, uh, a couple flesh wounds got put onto the Gene Stealer Colts over here but nothing to the admech. But this was the important one right here. The Gene Stealer cults, after taking a brutal beating from Dorox, managed to take him down, thus giving me control of the objective. All right. So uh, eagle-eyed uh, viewers among you will notice this objective is missing. That's because at the end of last turn, uh, I chose to use my uh, mission tactic to destroy it thus gaining a point for myself, of which uh, now here we have to go through the initiative phase, I mean the uh, morale phase again, but uh, I'm going to do that again here uh, on this objective, thus scoring me another point. So Are I'm you just sure gonna... you want to do that? Yeah, uh, oh, because yeah, if I hold it well, for Well, okay, turn... so it depends on if we're going to go for another turn. Are we going to go through the whole thing? I mean... Okay, okay, yep. Yeah, so, uh, so I'll yeah, destroy it. Yeah, I mean, if... Yeah. yeah. You're going to have to then get to I that have one. To, yeah, I have to get to that one. Because so, if we were to, like, call it at that point, mm -hmm. then you would you would have three, I would have three, and then you'd have the extra one. So right. now, whoever... Yeah. You have to be able to get to that one and either... And if I can destroy, destroy it. Destroy it or ca yeah. capture it. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. We're going to do it. We'll see. All right, so we'll go to morale phase. Uh, so once again, you can't four. break, but R99 does need to take a nerve check. Okay. Nerve check. Oh, a six, shoot. seven, eight, nine. Oh, no. So R99 oh. is shaken. Uh -oh. The previous MVP, uh, no more. Oh. All right, well, I've got a really bad uh, time here because this is my team out of action, three flesh wounds. So we're going to see if I break. Uh, I don't because I roll a four, so we're fine there. All right, and then let's see. All right, so Rouse Cipher, four, five, six, seven. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five is out of action. Uh, so that's a four plus five, nine. Rouse Cipher's right here. So Rouse Cipher is shaken. Xandis Rezik is shaken. This is actually the game right here if uh, if my team uh, just totally shakes. Foil Carleone is going to be shaken. And lastly, Rouse Cipher. Um, yeah, uh, no, no, that's the Flamer guy, Foil Carleone. Oh, that's it. So that's three shaken. So that means that the only guys who can act here on the final turn are these two right here. Uh, so that's going to be game. Because you can easily uh, stop me from controlling the objective. Because you already have, you've got two there. Uh, these two, one would have to fall back from combat. So that's game right there. All right. Well, so if you wouldn't have destroyed that. Are you sure you wanted to? No, destroy well, because that? Uh, no, because would they still control it. They, I did. I made my choice. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not going to second guess it now. But uh, but yeah, no, I probably well, so shouldn't have destroyed still, it right there. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, that's well, it. Would you have no? But seriously, though, would you still? Yeah, you would have controlled it. Yeah, I would have. Uh, I would have controlled it there because I okay. still had two models. Uh, All right. So if you hadn't destroyed so, it, it would be three 
to three plus one, so you would so win. So one. So uh, at, uh, you destroying it, that's two to three. So. Yeah, and there you go. It's so uh, lesson of the game is um, is you know uh, think about what you're doing before you do it. <laughs> awesome. And don't get overwhelmed. Don't get over. <laughs> don't get overwhelmed. There we go. Yay. All right. All right. So. So uh, there you yeah, go, guys. That was our, our first uh, game. Quick, we didn't put in extra tactics. Uh, yeah, the there's a lot part. more which we'll get um, into in later later yeah. videos. But uh, hopefully, uh, for you guys, this was a, sort of a helpful video to kind of see. Um, the things in action uh, get a sort of idea of what we were talking about in the uh, overview of the rules video. Um, more to come in the coming weeks. We'll yeah. go more into the kill teams, the sort of intricacies, the tactics you might want to use, both in the broader meaning of tactics and also in the actual in-game meaning of tactics. We'll go into that. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the future, we'll do uh, some painting videos, how to how to paint your terrain. How to paint your Make models? It all nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, taking and you on a journey. Yeah, we're taking <laughs> you through it all. Um, yeah. So thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks so for bearing with us too. To us, so you get yeah. notifications for when yeah. we, we're doing Warhammer Wednesdays and gameplay, and gameplay Fridays. Fridays. Yeah. Um, Give us a thumbs so, yeah, up if you liked up. it. Let us know in the comments yeah, what, uh, you, what you liked, see. what you didn't like. Yeah. Uh, bear with us on the lighting. Uh, we're working on that. Bear with us on the on the handheld camera sh yeah. cameramanship. <laughs> um, we'll get it eventually. Yeah. Uh, it's all a work in progress. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, uh, uh, and and thanks so much yeah, for thank watching. Thank you for watching, and, and hopefully uh, you feel a little bit more adept at playing. Uh, more adeptus. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Will you just give me like a little a little clap? Cool. All right. Also very loud, actually. I yeah. Can you? Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm not. Oh my God! Do you know how to clap? <laughs>